Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these colorful Truchet tiles. So what are Truchet tiles or Truche tiles? Truche tiles were first described in the 1704 memoir by a French guy, I believe. Yeah, named Sébastien Truchet. And these tiles are square tiles decorated with patterns that are not rotationally symmetric. And we'll be doing two variations today. The first one is the contrasting triangles. And these are the four patterns within these variation. And the second one we're going to do is called the quarter circles. And there are a total of two patterns here. So let's start with the contrasting triangles. I'm going to use the function called vertex. And vertex basically take in two arguments, the x and y coordinates of the point that we want to draw. But to use the vertex function, we also need to use two additional functions called begin shape and end shape. So begin shape comes at the beginning and end shape goes at the end. So let's start with three vertex points. So the first pattern that I want to draw is this one. So we're going to draw the part that is black here. So we need th these three points. So the top right point is going to be with comma zero. The bottom right point is going to be with comma height. And then the bottom left point is going to be zero comma height. All right. And actually, instead of putting with and height here, I'm going to set a variable called size because when we create an object of each of these shapes, we will be using a variable size, right? So let's do size here. And then this will be size, comma size. And then this is going to be size, All right? And then we also, if we click run now, nothing happens because we need those two function that I just told you. So begin shape and in shape. All right. And how about we fill it with the color black? Perfect. So now we have the first shape. I'm going to label it shape one, and I'm going to comment it out. The second shape that I want to draw is going to be the opposite of this shape. So we need the top left corner, the top right corner, and then the bottom left corner. So we actually already have the top right corner, which is this point. We don't need this one. And then we already have this one. So let's do 0, 0 here. All right. Let's go to the third shape. The third shape, let's do the one where we need 0, 0 here. And then we want this bottom right one, which is zero size. And then we want this bottom left here. No, this bottom left is this one. We want the bottom right here, which is going to be size, comma, size. All right. And then we need the fourth shape. And the fourth shape is going to be the opposite of this. So instead of zero comma size here, we will need size comma zero. I'm going to create a class called tile and I'm going to put all of these four shapes inside that class. So let's go to this arrow here, click plus sign, create file, call the JavaScript file tile.js and let's go to index.html file, come to this line of code copy and paste, and then change the name of sketch here to whatever is the name of the new file. In my case, tile.js. And this is how you integrate a new JavaScript file into the program. Let's go back to tile.js. Start by writing the word class. This class is going to be named tile. And then inside the constructor function, we will need the x and y arguments right, which is the top left corner of each of the tile. And then we can do this dot x equals to x and then this dot y equals to y. 
and let's do another method called display and then we're going to copy and paste these four shapes that we drew inside here and we're not going to be drawing all of these four shapes at once right so what we need is a conditional statement so we're going to actually also create another argument i'm going to call it type and let's set this type to type so when we create this tile object i want to give it a type so that we know which of these four shapes we're going to draw all right so inside the display method i'm going to write a conditional statement that said if this dot type equals to zero actually this will come after the begin shape and end before the end shape i'm going to draw this first shape here all right and else if this dot type equals to one then draw this sh second shape and we're going to do the same thing for the other two else and then the last one all right and then now let's go back to sketch.js what if we just create one tile and let's make the size we can keep it at 400 for now and then let's do t create this t to be a new tile and we want it to be at 0, 0, So we want to actually do the exact same thing, but create this as an object. And then let's do, oh, and then we need to give it a type, right? So let's do 0, t.display. So that's 0, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. But now I want to actually randomize the tile that we display. So I'm going to use a random function. And the random function can take in arguments in multiple ways. But right now, I'm going to do it by giving it one argument, which is the number 4. So basically, if you give it one argument, it will give us a random number between 0 and this number here that we give as an argument, but not including the number 4. So it's going to give a number between 0 and 3.9999. And because we're using this random number as the argument type, right, which ranges between 0 and 3, and it's an integer, we need to use a function called floor, and floor will convert from a floating point or a decimal point to an integer. And because the random number outputs the number from 0 to 3.9999, this expression here will output a number between 0 and 3. All right, so if we click run, now the number is randomized and we get these random tiles now let's create a grid of these tiles let's create an array called tiles and how about two more variables columns and rows and i'm gonna put size next to this and let's make the size how about 50. now we're gonna write a nested for loop and hopefully you guys are familiar with this process already if you have seen many of my tutorials but if not i will link some tutorials where i create a grid of objects using a nested for loop inside of the outer for loop we're going to first populate the tiles array here with empty 1d arrays and then inside here we're going to create these new tiles objects and instead of doing 0, 0, now we need to use the arguments i times size and j times size. All right, and then we need to call this display method, and we can just copy and paste this nested for loop. And then I'm going to need to leave this part, and then it's going to be tiles of i and j dot display. 
All right, let's try that. Whoa. Oh, the reason nothing is happening is because we have not set columns and rows yet. So columns is going to be width divided by the variable size here. And rows is going to be height divided by size. And now if we click run, nothing is happening still. What's going on? And the reason this is happening is because even though inside the tile.js file here, inside this class, we have these two variables, x and y, but we actually have not used it to actually move each of the tiles objects yet. So we can do that by using a function called translate. So we want to move the origin point from the top left corner here to each of the respective this.x and this.y. So let's do that. So let's do translate and translate by this.x and this.y. And if we just do this, it is still not going to work because when we use the transformation functions, specifically in this case, translate, we need to use two additional functions called push and pop and push. So this push function saves the new transformation settings that we have put inside this method, which is translate to this.x and this.y, right? And then we need another function called pop that returns it back to the original state, which basically brings back the origin point to the top left corner of the canvas before this function is called again for the next tile. And then it moves or it translates the new this.x and this.y point for the new tile. So let's try that. And then there you go. So we have the tiles that we want. The last piece that we want to change is how about the color? So let's set this.c equals to c and put c as a new argument, new parameter. And then inside the sketch.js file, I'm going to create an array, an array of the color palette that I used previously in my Mondrian inspired generative art tutorial. So it comprised of four different colors, yellow, blue, red, and white almost white all right so let's do this and then i'm going to also randomize the color so we can do colors and then we're going to use the index number right so we have a total of four colors here so let's do floor of random of also four nope it's not working. Colors. Let's go back to tiles.js. This.c. Oh, <laughs> we have not used this.c in here. All right. And then let's do how about no stroke? That looks really neat. Then you can change the color, I mean, the size of your tiles. How about we do it smaller? You can play around. So this is the first variation. And the second variation is going to be of the quarter circles pattern. And it might actually be a little bit simpler too because we only need two patterns. So let's see what are those patterns. So we need this shape and this shape. And we're gonna use the function called arc, which is the built-in function within P5.js. And arc takes in a total of six arguments. So the first two are going to be the X and Y coordinate of the circle or the ellipse where this arc is going to be a part of. And then the third and the fourth is going to be the width and the height. And then the fifth and the sixth is going to be the starting angle and the ending angle of that arc. So let's start by creating just a pattern. How about that? So I'm going to use the arc function. And as I say, the arc function takes in a total of six arguments. So let's do zero comma zero, which is going to be the top left corner of this canvas here. And then the size, let's just do size and size. And the size is going to be a variable that is initialized at 400. And then I'm going to use the angle degrees. So I'm gonna set the angle mode to degrees. So I want it to go from zero to 90 degrees. So let's try that. All right, so we have our first arc. The second one is going to go from 180 degrees to 270 degrees. 
but the origin point is now going to be at size comma size. So this is going to be size and this is going to be size and then the width and the height is going to be size comma size and the degrees will go from 180 to 270. All right, so this is shape number one. Okay, so let's comment this out and let's do shape number two. So it's going to be arc. So it's going to have the center at what? Size comma zero, right? And then the width and the height will be size comma size. And it's going to go from 90 to 180. All right, and then the last shape is going to have the center at zero comma size. And then we're going to have it go from 270 to 360. Perfect. And then I want to also do no fill. And I want the stroke weight to be quite thick about five now that we know how to create these two patterns I'm gonna go back to the tile class that we have already created so I'm gonna copy this come back here so how about we come to tile.js here and I'm gonna comment this piece of code out all right so we have the code for these two shapes right so we just have to do the exact same thing so we're gonna do if this type equals to zero then we're going to draw this first shape here else because we only have two patterns we can just do else All right, and then we're gonna set these color settings in front. And I think that should be fine. And then let's go to sketch.js. First, do not forget to set the angle mode to degrees. And then now we only need the type to be the random number of two, right? So it goes between zero to one nine 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 one point nine 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 nine, and then the integer will be zero and one. The color will be the same. And then let's click run. All right, what did I do wrong? Let's go back to tile.js. Oh, size. Oh, we have no stroke here. So let's. All right. And the pop function is at the end here. So we need the pop function here. All right. And then the color now is not within fill, right? It has to be within the function stroke. And there you go. So now we have two variations of the Truche tiles. One is the triangles and the other one is this arc here. So why don't you give it a try? Maybe come up with different tile patterns or maybe overlay one over another. I think it would be really cool to see what you can come up with. Give it a try.